Welcome to consonant sounds and their manner of articulation. Last week we were talking about how to describe consonants. There are three basic characteristics called voicing, place, and manner of articulation. Last week we looked at place, but this week we will look at manner of articulation. So when we think about manner of articulation, let's think about the differences in how consonants are produced. Try producing these sounds yourself and see if you can pick out the difference in what's happening in your mouth that makes these sounds different. The first sound is n, mm, n, mm, n, mm, versus the second sound, which is l, l, l. If we look at the place of articulation, both sounds are being produced exactly at the same place, but they are still different. Can you tell the difference? Let's try two others. Try the first one. S, s, s. And now let's try the second one. T, t, t. They are clearly different. Again, these two sounds are being produced at exactly the same place of articulation, but they are different. And what is that which causes the difference in the consonant sounds? That is manner of articulation. Basically, manner of articulation is how the airstream is obstructed to produce sounds. If we talk about place of articulation, it's the where the sounds are produced. And the manner of articulation is how they're produced. There's six basic manners of articulation that we will look at. The first one is stops. Stops are sounds produced by blocking the airstream completely and then releasing it in a burst of air. Just like the name describes it, stops are sounds that cannot be prolonged, but they just happen and then they stop. Let me give you an example. So we have these two sounds, p and b. Those are sounds that just occur once, but they cannot be stretched out. They cannot be prolonged. And how these sounds are produced, both of these sounds are produced basically in the same manner. Your lips close, and then at the same time, there is a buildup of air that's coming from your lungs, and the air builds up until it is released. And then there's the, the burst of air, a little explosion happens, and that's where p comes in, or b comes in. That explosion is what also makes stops sometimes be called plosives, like explosive, because you have that little explosion that's occurring um, because of that pressure of the air that is being released really quickly. There are more stops in the English language. We have these other two, the t and the d. The difference is that for these sounds, you have the tip of the tongue approaching the alveolar ridge and touching the alveolar ridge and holding that air that's coming in from the lungs and creating that pressure that builds up behind the alveolar ridge and then just suddenly releasing it, causing t, t. Same thing happens with these two sounds, but the difference here is that the back of the tongue is coming up and touching the velum, and that's where the air builds up. The air builds up right here, and then it is released with k, k. And then you, you can hear that sound coming out, k or g, g. There's that explosion of sound. So if we look at these six sounds, these sounds are all stops, but they vary slightly because of the place where they're produced. So you could call the first two bilabial stops, while the second two are alveolar stops, and the last two are velar stops because of where they're produced. But when looking at manner of articulation, they are all stops. The next manner of articulation is the fricatives. Fricatives are consonant sounds produced by a partial obstruction of the airstream, as opposed to the stops where there is a complete obstruction and then there's a sudden release. The fricatives, there is just a partial obstruction. Let's look at two. For example, if we look at f and v, these two sounds occur with the bottom lip approaching the top teeth and basically they touch each other, but there's just enough space left for air to come out. So when you produce, for example, f, there's, there's just enough space where that airstream is coming out. And there's that airstream coming out through your mouth that is basically turbulent. It's not 
free-flowing air, but it's a turbulent and airstream that's coming out of your mouth that causes this fricative. And that turbulence causes friction, um, and that's why they're called fricatives. So you have the f and the v that occur as fricatives. As opposed to the stops, fricatives can actually be prolonged as long as you have air in your lungs. So you could go as long as you have air in your lungs, whereas stops, they just stop. And we have and th. That is the exact same case, but the tongue, the tip of the tongue is coming between the teeth, but is leaving just enough space for the air to come out turbulently and to create that sound that is considered a fricative. So you got th like in thing and th like in those. Two more fricatives would be the s and the z. With these two, the tip of the tongue is approaching the alveolar ridge, and there's just enough space right there where the air is coming out, and that's what causes that s, that z as well. There's that turbulence, um, that quality where you can just keep producing that sound, and that is what a fricative is. There's also these two, which occur a little bit further back, and you have Basically, the tip of the tongue goes a little bit further back, and it's the blade of the tongue that's actually coming up to the hard palate, and then that's where that friction is happening. So you got sh and zh. So all these sounds are fricative, but because of where they're produced, we can describe them differently. So the F and the V would be labiodental fricatives, because the place of articulation is labiodental, and the manner of articulation is a fricative, right? So if we describe the th and the th, we would describe them as interdental fricatives. The s and the z, or the s and the z, we would call them alveolar fricatives, and the sh and the z, we would call them alveopalatal fricatives. The next manner of articulation that we're going to look at is the affricates. The affricates are very interesting because they are actually a combination of two sounds. It's a combination of a stop and a fricative. So how does it react? What qualities does it have? Is it more like a stop? Is it more like a fricative? Well, let's find out. So we've got the ch like in champion or the j like in jacket or age or judge. And these sounds cannot be prolonged. So even if they're a combination between a fricative and a stop, what's really happening is they're behaving sort of like stops, where they just occur in a burst of air and then they disappear. However, they're slightly different because they're not as explosive as the stops. They're a little bit softer. And that creates that different quality of the sound where it starts off like a stop and then it smooths out into a fricative. These two occur right here and that's why they're called alveopalatal affricates. The affricates are the only ones that have two symbols as the representation of one sound. Let's look at the next manner of articulation. It's the nasals. So far, we've been talking only about sounds that are produced where the airstream is coming out of the mouth, but the nasals are actually produced with the airstream passing through the nose. There's basically three nasals, the m, the n, and also Mm. What happens with the first one, let's take the mm. The lips close, and that's where the airstream is being stopped, but the air actually leaves the nasal cavity, and that's what gives it that different quality. Mm. You could try pinching your nose and closing your nose and try producing this sound, and it is impossible to do because you need the air coming out of the nasal cavity for it to actually sound like that. The difference with the n is that the air is actually stopped with the tip of the tongue at the alveolar ridge, but still the air comes out the nose. And finally, the n, like in sink or thing, the airstream is stopped with the back of the tongue at the velum and the air comes out the nasal cavity. It's that nasality that actually gives the sounds their quality. And now, if we talk about these sounds, obviously the m mm is a bilabial nasal because it's occurring at the bilabial place of articulation. The n mm 
is an alveolar nasal, and we can describe the ng as a velar nasal. Next up, we have the liquids. Now, they're called liquids because the air actually comes out the mouth, but in a very fluid manner. The fricatives, they have a lot of friction. It's turbulent air, but the liquids are very fluid air coming out of your mouth. There's only two liquids. You have the lateral, which is the letter L, pronounced L, like in light and belly and call. So what happens here is that the tip of the tongue touches the alveolar ridge, but the air actually escapes through the sides of the tongue. And that's why it's called the lateral. And then you also have the retroflex, which is the R, like in right or carry or car. It's called the retroflex because when you're producing it, the tip of the tongue slightly bends backwards. And that's what retroflex means. Retro meaning back and flex meaning bending. So the tip of the tongue bends backward and produces that clear quality of the English R. So when describing these sounds, these two are actually alveolar liquids. But if you say alveolar liquid, you may mean either one. So to be very clear, we call the lateral the alveolar lateral and the retroflex the alveolar retroflex. Finally, our last manner of articulation is the glides. Glides are sounds that are produced with a relatively wide opening of the mouth and little turbulence. These are also called semi-vowels, and I'll explain why in a second. The glides in the English language are the W and the Y, or the W and the Y. So if you think about these two sounds, they're actually produced with a lot of air coming out of the mouth, just really wide opening of the mouth. And you have way, way, for example, woo. there's a lot of space for the airstream to pass. The same thing goes for y, y, yes. Um, there's not a lot of blockage that's occurring. Um, but they're called the semi-vowels because their place will affect how they behave. So in all these cases that you see here, the glides are occurring at the beginning of the syllable. So for example, you have way, which is clearly in the beginning, but you also have awoke, awoke, and that's in the beginning of the syllable. Same thing here, yes, and grew year, so grew year. When they occur at the beginning of a syllable before the vowel, these glides will act like consonants, and that's when they're called glides. But if you have a glide that occurs after the vowel, it could be at the end of the syllable or right next to the vowel before the next syllable. These would actually be considered vowels, not consonants. So they're only consonants when they occur at the beginning of the syllables. And that's why we call them glides or semi-vowels. The W or the W is the bilabial glide and the Y or the Y is the alveopalatal glide. So if we go back to what we were talking about in the beginning of the video, what is the difference between the n and the l? And it's actually quite simple. If we think about the n, it's an alveolar nasal. So it's occurring at the alveolar ridge, but the air is coming out of the nose. And the l is an alveolar lateral, where it's also happening at the alveolar ridge, but the air is coming out of the sides of the tongue. And the other two sounds, the s and the t, well, the s is an alveolar fricative, which can be prolonged and is just turbulent air coming out of your mouth, while the t is an alveolar stop, where that sound cannot be prolonged. But they're both happening at the alveolar ridge. Actually, the four sounds are alveolar, but each one is different because of the manner of articulation. Okay, so let's do a dictation. Go grab a piece of paper if you don't have one with you, Number it from 1 to 10, and we'll try to do the following. I will dictate 10 words, and for words 1 through 5, I'll ask you to write the phoneme of the initial sound of the word and its description. By that, I mean the place and manner of articulation. Then, for words 6 through 10, we will write the phoneme of the final sound and its description. Again, the place and the manner of articulation. So, for example, if I dictate game, 
game, game, and we're looking for the initial sound, then you would write g, and that is a velar stop. The place is velar, the manner is stop. But if we're looking for the final sound, and I dictate game, 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 then that final sound is m. Mm. It's a bilabial nasal because the place is bilabial and the manner is nasal. So words one through five, initial sound, six through ten, final sound. Let's start. Number one. Year. 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 Number two. Thing. 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 Number three. Patch. 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 Number four. Fake. 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 Number five. Nose. 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 And now we're going for final sounds. Number six. Year. 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 Seven. Thing, thing, thing. Number eight, patch, patch, patch. Number nine, fake, fake, fake. And number ten, nose, nose, nose. Okay, so let's look at the answers and think about what was difficult, what was easy, and bring that to class. So this ends our video for manner of articulation, and I will see you next class.